All right, so today we're going to be talking about our brand new five star Denjo unit, which is Baiju. Now, Baiju, of course, is a long awaited character for many people, and today we're going to be talking about his best builds, his best artifacts, his teams, all that type of stuff that you possibly need to know in regards about Baiju. So, but other than that, make sure to leave a sub and a like on the video if you're enjoying the Genshin Impact content. I also make videos on Honkai Impact and Honkai Star Wars as well. So make sure to leave a sub for those games if you enjoy those games as well. But let's go ahead and start talking about Baiju, which is our brand new 5-star Dendro support slash healer. He shows a lot of promise. And when I mean he shows a lot of promise, I do mean he has a lot of utility in his kit and he makes up for it in a lot of ways that other characters don't have. You're able to substitute out a good amount of units because of Baiju being on the team. He does seem like a very good character in all honesty, especially because he's able to hold that Dendro element, which makes him so strong already. He has a lot under him. So we're going to be talking about his talents first and foremost. Now, for the most part, you're not going to be leveling up one of these talents. And of course, you probably already know what it is, which is the normal attack. The normal attack looks nice, but unless you're trying to run a DPS Baiju, which is not 100% the best thing you should be doing. But if you want to, that's your account. You do what you want. Um, you don't really need to level up his normal attack in all honesty. He does have passives to help him with damage, but it kind of doesn't work out in all honesty. You could do a lot better with other characters. Um, and also another thing, he kind of works like Heizo instead of a normal Catalyst user. Um, a lot of the normal attacks that he does aren't going to be actually connecting from far away. You do need to be very close and this also includes his charge attack as well. So make sure to note that as well when it comes to him and his range. For his skill, he's going to be using this to be able to heal. So the skill, you're going to be throwing out the sprite, and the sprite's going to do three attacks to three random enemies in the near vicinity, or it's going to be doing the three attacks on the one enemy, or it might not even do it to any enemies. If it can't reach any of them, it'll come straight back to you. And when it does, it's going to give you a certain amount of HP to all of your party members based on Baiju's max HP. So this is really good. You do get a lot of healing from this, and it does do um, dendro application to all the enemies it hits, whether it be all three different enemies, It'd be the same enemy or it'd be, um, of course, if you don't hit anyone, well, it's not going to do dendro application to no one. But you do get a good amount of healing for your whole party and you can easily see how fast all of these characters get their health back. It's a nice chunk of health for them to be able to get back on the field and not have to worry about getting one shotted. So this is a really good skill in all honesty. This is going to help a little bit when it comes to dendro application, although the dendro application is not the craziest thing in the world. Having that initial hit of dendro is going to allow them to actually be able to proc certain reactions that you possibly need in order to be able to make certain teams work so this is really really nice but the main part of his kit that is really really good and really really busted now we're talking about baiju's burst and when it comes to his burst this is a very very strong part of his kit which is basically whenever you pop his burst you're going to be getting a shield that regenerates every 2.5 seconds so yes the shield will break itself every 2.5 seconds and then it will replace them every single time it destroys itself Every single time the shield gets active or basically when it pops up again, you're going to be getting a certain amount of healing based on Baiju's max HP and you're also going to be attacking your opponents with these spirit vines. Now these spirit vines are going to be doing some nice dendro application for whenever you're attacking an enemy or whoever pops the actual shield. You kind of want the enemies to actually hit your shield so that it's able to be um, destroyed and then it gets right put back on. It's going to be giving you healing, it's going to be giving you resistant interruption, it's going to be giving you a lot of things in regards to dendro application, healing, and helping you not get thrown around a lot. And as you can see, I'm going to just say this already before we even get to the team section, somebody like Sino is going to be able to benefit from this very heavily. Now, not only does he have dendro application from his shield, from his um, skill, mostly from his shield of course, he also has healing and he also has a resistance interruption which is going to help out Sino a lot with not getting hit because you know how little Sino actually has within this kit. So there's a lot of really cool things that you can get from um, Baiju from just his skills alone um, but let's go ahead and start talking about his passives because this is also something very important and something that's really good and it's going to make him very strong. Five fortunes forever. Basically whenever you're above a certain amount of HP you're going to be getting a certain amount of buffs. Whenever your HP is less than 50% Baiju is going to be getting 20% healing bonus so this is going to help him heal a lot faster. And then for his second part of the passive, if your HP is more than 50%, you're going to be getting Dendro Damage Bonus. Now, in all honesty, this Dendro Damage Bonus isn't going to be crazy because Baiju is not going to be going crazy with his reactions in all honesty or the attack in all honesty. So you kind of run a really build him for HP. And whenever you do is get low HP or whenever um, your HP of your active character when you have the shield on or anything like that happens or whenever you throw out your skill and you have um, your, sh your team get healed by the skill, you're going to be getting a lot more HP regarding the character, um, you know, having less HP or not. So this is really, really good in terms of having, you know, you going from one shot to almost having half of your health back. So this is really, really nice. 
and then the last thing is all things are of the earth this is going to be basically whenever you do have the shield buff on which is from the burst you're going to be getting a certain buff depending on how much max hp you have up to 50,000 HP, so that's kind of the threshold you want to hit. You're going to be increasing the damage from your Burning Bloom, Hyper Bloom, and Burgeon reaction damage, and it's going to be absolutely amazing. You also get Aggravate and Spread reaction damage, um, increased by 0.8. Um, of course, scaling with the thousand per for 50,000. So this is really, really cool and really, really nice to see. You can definitely see a difference, although a very minor one. There's still a difference in how much damage you get. Adding on this number for however many hyper blooms you get, or however many burning, burgeon, uh, aggravate spread, you're gonna see the numbers and they're gonna pile up and that's just gonna be a lot more damage as many reactions as you can get. And while we know dendro reactions are very frequent in these teams with like Alhatham, with Nilu, with um, Sino, you're gonna be getting a lot of these dendro reactions, them getting buffed constantly with this shield. Um, you're gonna be seeing the numbers add up and you're gonna be a lot more damage over time than it is at this, you know, basically at the initial start. So yeah, this is a really nice pass that I have. He's a really nice buffer for not only reaction damage, he's a good healer, he helps with shielding, he has the overall package when it comes to being a support. This is why he's almost not okay. This is a little bit of an exaggeration, but I was gonna about to say that he's almost a good replacement for Nahida. But I mean it in a way that if you have Nahida on another team and you want to use another Dendro Applicator for um the Spiral Abyss, Baiju is a really good pick in a lot of teams that need that extra um I guess you could say that need that extra Dendro application that you need to actually get these reactions happening. And of course, his last one, which is actually a really cool passive to have, is that when Baiju's in your team, whoever is the active character. Whenever you get harvestables from the ground, you're going to be getting some max HP back. So that's really, really freaking cool in all honesty. It's kind of like a mini NRE when it comes to having Baijiu on your team. So this can make a little quality of life type of um, deal for your overworld teams. When it comes to his weapons, there's going to be two weapons that are definitely going to be taking the cake here for sure. There's no other options. One is the premium and one is the free to play. The J Fall Splendor, of course, is his regular and signature weapon. And the J Fall Splendor is going to be for three seconds after using Elemental Burst or creating a shield. The equipping character can gain the Primordial Jade Regalia effect, which is basically it restores 4.5 energy every 2.5 seconds, and you gain 0.3% elemental damage bonus corresponding to your max HP for every thousand that you have. And then it goes up to 12% as well. And this effect can still happen if the equipped character is not on the field. So of course, when you pop his shield and leave, it's still going to work. And this is the HP main stat, of course, because his skill and his um, shield scale off of max HP. Now, the other weapon that you can use is going to be the prototype Amber. It kind of has the same exact passive. If you have it at R5, you're just not going to get that elemental damage bonus, which is honestly not that bad. Now, when it comes to Baiju, I think he's the most diverse when it comes to his artifacts. This is because depending on what team that you have and what artifacts you have on other characters, this is going to really matter and depend on what exactly you're going to be putting on him. If he's the only Dendro character on the team and no one else has Deepwood Memories, then he's going to want Deepwood Memories. If he's the only character that has, or I mean, if other characters have Deepwood Memories, then you might want to go for HP stent type of um, artifacts, which are, you know, like the Tenacity of Millilith, um, the brand new HP set. This is going to help him get to his 50,000 um you know threshold threshold or mark that he needs to get his passive all the way filled up and if you have the 50 50 000 hp already then you can kind of run hp and energy recharge because it's going to help him a lot with getting his burst up constantly keeping his shield up 100 percent of the time and this is going to just make the quality of life and use of baiju very very high now the way i built him was just a bunch of hp of course to help him with the scalings and his passive and also as much energy recharge as i can i chose to put an energy recharge sands on him just to make it a lot easier to pock his burst as much as i possibly can and then hp goblet hp circlet and as many energy recharge and hp substats that i could put on all of these um, artifacts so there is a lot of combinations that you can use for baiju and that's a really good thing to be honest because it's not a really stressful to kit him out because he has so many different options now, when it comes to constellations, we do have a, quite a bit of them, and some of them are actually kind of nasty. Um, Universal Diagnosis is going to get one additional charge, and this is going to basically be his skill. So you can proc it twice and get a fat ton of healing. Um, when your own active character hits a nearby opponent with their attacks, Baiju will unleash a Grossomer Sprite Splice, and then you're going to be getting attack and healing from Universal Diagnosis from this. So basically, C2 is whenever your active character hits a char uh, another enemy, you're going to basically pop in this skill for free. So technically, you don't need Baiju or you don't need to pull him out anymore. He just does his job without having to be put on the team. That can kind of help with rotations in certain um, amount as long as he gets his um, 
particles back. I think this is actually an amazing constellation, kind of busted. Um, Holistic Revivation is going to be his burst, his shield, so you're gonna get plus three on that. Um, when he uses burst, Baiju's elemental mastery is gonna increase by 80 for all party members. So yeah, that is a big buff. Something that Nahida does already, so he'll be providing similar kits to Nahida if you have him at C4. At C5, his skill gets boosted up by three. And then for C6, Whenever you pop your burst, you're going to be getting additional damage on your spirit veins from your shield. And whenever they hit an enemy, you're going to be getting a shield back instantly. So yeah, he's going to be constantly popping those shields, getting constant um, sprites coming out and healing. So yeah, that is some crazy stuff that he could possibly do with C6. You could probably make some nasty builds with him being able to have C6 and have that shield proc like crazy. I can't imagine the reactions that you can get with this. But for the most part, when it comes to Baiju and his teams, which is a very important part, he is going to be replacing the Dendro counterparts into a lot of teams, but in a certain catch. For Sino, he does have an amazing synergy with Sino because you are getting that Dendro application and you can add Chincho and Yalan with them. And then they're going to be producing the cores and Sino is going to be able to use the Hyper Bloom. It's just an overall really good combo. I found no problems using this in the Spiral Abyss. He was able to get his shield back. Xing Chou and Yulan got their Umbers back. And Sino was able to keep his burst. They were going crazy. So much damage was happening. So many hyper pool reactions were happening. It was just overall such an amazing experience using this character. Another team that you can use with this is with Alhaitham and Baishu instead of Nahida. Now, when it comes to Sino, he can go more AoE with how his team works with, you know, Xing Chou, Yulan, Baishu, and Sino. For all hate them, you kind of want to run this with a single target type of damage or single target um, target because Baiju's application is really good. But the only problem is that Nahida, she really wants to stay with AoE because she can chain so many different enemies and have reactions happen a lot quickly. Um, because they're chained together and they can take the Android damage at the same time. Baiju's shield is going to shoot one person at a time. And if you're having to run around a lot with your shield and the spirit veins are going to one enemy at a time, it's not going to really be the most ideal situation when you're running around with Baiju with like I'll hate them or something like that. So you can run I'll hate them. You can run Nilu. You can run um, Sino. There's a lot of different types of teams that you can run with Baiju just because his Dendro application is pretty nice. It's not the craziest thing in the world. Of course, it doesn't surpass Nahida, but it's a good replacement to Nahida if you're going to be using her on one side of the Sparrow Abyss. So yes, Baiju is really nice since he is a healer, since he does buff um, Dendro reactions, and he also allows for you to have that you know uh, resistance to interruption. He just does a lot for the team. He is a pretty nice character. I felt really nice with him. And I do think he is in a good investment for the future. In all honesty, with how Fontaine is going to be filled with Hydro units, we don't know what we're going to get in the future. He just feels really nice right now when it comes to him and his kits. But other than that, that's pretty much it when it comes to Baiju. He seems like a really nice character. Of course, there's going to be more testing with more teams um, in the future. And we're going to see, you know, basically the full extent of his kit. But for right now, for what I know, he seems like a very nice character. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching until the end. Let me know if you're going to be summoning for Baiju. And let me know how your summons go for Baiju if you're watching this video after you get them. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching until the end. See you on the next one. And peace.